what's up people happy thursday hope all of you're having a great day so far the weekend is almost here this week went up pretty fast this week so that's always a plus um getting into this episode of general hospital this episode it was bittersweet the beginning part of this episode because the bitch is back Alexis has her law license back and I'm happy as fuck. And the reason why I'm so happy for this is because like Alexis is like one of my favorite characters on this show. And her law license, like her being a lawyer basically defines her. Like when everything else in her life is going to hell in a handbasket, like shit is going on with her kids and you know, she's going through a divorce or a breakup, you know, just shit in general. When things are bad, in her life, she still has her law license. She still can be a lawyer. At the end of the day, that's what defines her. Her being Alexis Davis, attorney at law. That's who she is. You know, that's her whole face. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what defines her. Like, look at punk ass Donald Trump with that hairstyle. That defines Don that hairstyle defines Donald Trump. You know what I mean? Like, shit defines you. You know what I mean? Like her legal license is what makes alexis alexis and you notice the change in her ever since she lost it you know now that she finally got it back she can finally be her badass self and i'm happy for that you know what i mean like i was thrilled with that diane you know i love diane diane is like my favorite person but i felt like i wanted to tell diane to shut up today <laughs> like seriously like when she kept telling Alexis about Julian being out on bail and stay away from him. I just hate when people keep telling Alexis what to do. It's like, is this woman not a grown ass woman? In my opinion, if she wants to be with Julian, so what? I don't see people lecturing Carly about divorce and Sonny. Hell, everybody kept trying to tell Carly to go back to Sonny. But yet everybody keeps telling Alexis to stay away from Julian like Julian is worse than Sonny. Hell no. Sonny's worse than Julian, in my opinion. Um... Like, that's just the way the cookie crumble at the end of the day. I feel like Alexis should be, you know, she's a grown-ass woman. Make whatever decisions she wants to make. Who cares? Um, If she wants to be with... If she wants to be with Julian, let her be with Julian. Obviously, that's who she wants, and she's in love with him. Then so be it. It's like, why are people telling this grown-ass person what to do? It gets on my nerves. It's like frustrating as hell. So Julian showed up to um to the hospital to see Ava. And Dylan got on my fucking nerves today. Like seriously. I get that Dylan is trying to be there for Kiki and he's comforting her. That's his girlfriend or whatever. But the way he was acting when Julian got there just irritated the fuck out of me. He tried to basically say Julian tried to take over take control of the situation. When Kiki was the one who was there all night. Whose fault is that? He was in jail. He just got bailed this morning. So had he known, he would have been there all night. But he obviously couldn't because he just got out of jail. Furthermore, he was not, in my opinion, he wasn't trying to take over the situation. He wasn't trying to take control. He was trying to comfort Kiki and do what was right for her. The doctor clearly said only one person at a time can go in the room. Kiki was not ready to see her mother yet. Because of what she found out about her mother in the pill situation with Morgan. So obviously she wasn't ready to face her mother. So Julian said he'll go in first and she could stay out there and collect herself. And then when she's ready, she can go in. How is that him taking control of the situation? Dylan told him, oh, I'm going to say something to him. Dylan, shut the fuck up. He smacked the fire out your ass. Like, shut up. Because he will kick skin off your forehead. Be quiet. Seriously. I, I respect the fact that he's trying to be there for Kiki. But... I don't know what he was seeing, but what I was seeing was Julian trying to comfort his niece and be there and trying to make, you know, the situation easier for her. He suggested that she should go first, but obviously she didn't want to go first. She's not ready to see her mother. So Julian said, I'll go see her and you can collect yourself. And when you're ready, you can go see her. What was the problem with that? I don't see him trying to take control or tell her what to do. 
That's not what he was doing. He was trying to make life a little easier for her. Whatever decision she was, you know, wanted to make, he was cool with. I don't think he knows about the pill situation yet. I don't think he knows about all that. He just knows that she was in a fire. That's all he know. He don't know the death of what happened yet. Um, And that's pretty much what Jordan was worried about when her and Dante were talking. She was worried about a mob war because if Julian find out how she got into intensive care and the burn unit and stuff like that, he might want to go after Sonny and Carly and get revenge. But here's my thing. How the fuck is this mob related? Last I checked, for the last few months, Julian's been in jail. And before that, he was doing Olivia's bidding. Two, Ava hasn't been doing any mob shit in a long time. The Jerome criminal organization is pretty much dead. So what crime syndicate do they even still have? The Jerome organization is beyond dead. What men do they still have? What territory do they have? What shipments are they putting out? They haven't been doing anything mob related in a long time. So Julian was pretty much out the business. The only reason he kind of got pulled back in was because of Olivia. That's the only reason. Beyond that, he's out the business. So, I don't see how it's, um, I don't see how that's mob related or how this is going to entice a mob war. And furthermore, Julian would be stupid as fuck to even do a mob war seeing as how you're out on bail. Anything you do that the cops can prove, your ass is going back to jail to await your trial. So he might want to tread lightly. And Sonny and him at this time did not have nothing to do with why Ava was in intensive care. Her dumb ass was the one who threw the damn lamp like a fool. The hell you going to throw a damn oil lamp for? What are you, crazy? You nut. That whole conversation between Sonny and Dante was stupid as hell. Because, as usual, Sonny talking about, oh, when Avery get older, he going to tell Avery all the bad things Ava done. So let me get this straight. When Avery gets older, you're going to tell her all the bad things Ava done. But let me get this right. You're, I, I'm willing to bet Sonny will not tell her a damn thing he's ever done. I bet you he's just going to water it down and sugarcoat it. I bet you that's what he's going to do. He's going to make Ava seem like the devil incarnate, but make but come out trying to make himself smell like roses. That's exactly what he's going to do. I know Sonny's style. He's not going to tell her what he did to Scott Baldwin's daughter, how he got her hooked on drugs and had her stripping in his strip club. I bet you he won't tell Avery that. I bet you won't. I bet you he won't tell Avery how he shot Dante in the chest, point blank range. I bet you he won't say how it was his fault Michael got shot and put in a coma. I bet you he won't say that. I bet you he won't say how he murdered A.J. Quartermain at point blank range, an uh, unarmed person. I bet you he won't say that. I bet you he won't say none of the shit he does. He probably won't even, he probably gonna sit there and tell Avery, oh, I'm a coffee importer. I bet you that's what he's gonna do. Because that's typical Sonny. He paints everybody else like they're a piece of garbage, but yet he tried to make himself seem like he's St. Victor or somebody. Hell no. If you're gonna tell your side of the story, if you're gonna tell her how evil her mother is, why don't you tell your daughter also what you've done in your life? Instead of trying to paint yourself as this saint, like you saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost spirited, why don't you tell her all about your shit? Put your shit on the table. I'm just saying, fair is fair. Don't sit there and try to paint Ava like she's the devil in a red dress, but paint yourself like you're God Almighty. Hell no. That ain't right. That's not right. This is what I don't like about Sonny. That hypocrisy. This That's what I don't like. If you're going to say some shit about Ava, yeah, Ava did her dirt, but so have you. Your hands are plenty dirty. Plenty. You're a criminal. You live your life criminal. Every day you're you're doing something criminal. Every shipment that you bring in is criminal. Every day. So if you're going to throw some salt on Ava, throw some back at, uh, at yourself. Don't throw dirt on somebody else's name and then try to make it, shine your shit up and make it gold. Don't do that. Because that's trifling as fucking is fucked up. Now, I'm not defending Ava some people say well you sound like you are I don't care right is right wrong is wrong I'm all about fair if I mean yeah Ava has done some despicable shit but it put the cards on the table so is Sonny last time I checked he ain't no doctor he ain't no lawyer he ain't no cop he's a fucking mob boss he's a kingpin who brings shipments through the town whatever those shipments are but I know it's illegal contraband he murders people Hell, he murdered or ordered the murder of plenty of people. That's why he is where he is today. 
obviously. Um, so anyway, that whole thing was just dumb. That whole conversation was just stupid between him and Dante. Um, then he tried to accuse Dante of having sympathy for Ava or whatever. It's not about having sympathy for people, but when you got Avery, who's a little kid, she's involved in all this. It's like, you kind of got to play devil's advocate here. Um, that's basically what Michael tried to do. Um, so Kiki, I guess, went over to Sonny's, I guess, to get his side of the story about what happened in the warehouse, I suppose. That whole scene with, um, what's her face? Nell. You know Bobby is like the shit. Because Bobby called it how she see it. And that's what I always liked about Bobby. She calls it like she sees it. Obviously, she still has some animosity towards Nell. Rightfully so. And she doesn't want Nell with Michael. Me, personally, I don't want Nell with Michael. I just feel like there's no spark between them. And for me, it's just a little nasty. Because... Okay, yeah, they're not biologically related, but Nell is technically his adoptive aunt, so that's just nasty. Like I said to people a couple months ago, if you Google it, look up Carly Corindles, Wikipedia. Under siblings, it says Nell Benson, adoptive sister. So as long as she's on your family tree, she's family. So it's nasty. It's kind of incest, so it's disgusting. Like I said, that's like... You know, Sonny's sister, Courtney. Say if Courtney Matthews was still alive. She's still technically Michael's aunt by adoption. So what if he wanted to date Courtney or something like that? That's You're dating your aunt. It's nasty. Um, so anyway, one of the scenes I loved was, of course, Finn and Hayden. I feel like Hayden, you know, basically was resistant to the whole family thing. You know, her and Finn raising a baby together, living together. I feel like she's resistant for a number of reasons. One, because of his drug addiction and stuff. You know, he's still battling that, you know, still going through rehab for that. And because I think she feels like she needs a moment to think, you know, clearly because all of this is happening so fast. I mean, one minute her and Finn are trying to make a relationship and then two, he's battling a drug addiction. So they break up for a little bit. Then she gets hit with the pregnancy news and now he's telling her that he wants to move in with her, that they should get a place together. So it's all like hitting her like a ton of bricks, like all it. And plus on top of that, now she's having morning sickness. So it's like everything coming at her at one time. So it's a lot to deal with. You know, it's a lot of information, a lot of stuff to process. So, you know, she just I feel like she's a little afraid, you know what I mean? Like to take that leap. But he pretty much told her, like, he wants to do what's best for her and the baby. He's down for whatever decision she wants, whatever choice she wants. He's okay with it. But he said that he's in love with her and he wants to raise their family together. Now, here's the thing. I hope they get a place together because there is no way in hell you're going to raise a baby out of a hotel room. I'm just saying. Everybody on the show pretty much got a set. So I feel like they need to build a new set for Hayden and Finn. Now, this is the question I have for all of y'all. What do you think that they should have? Should they, what kind of place do you think they should have? Should they have a house or should they have an apartment? I think they should have like a nice apartment. I don't think they need a house. They're only having one kid, so I don't really think a house is necessary. It should be like a nice little spacious apartment, kind of like what they, the apartment they had on Friends. You know, something spacious. You know, not nothing over the top, but you know, something spacious. I like them as a couple. I know some people, you know, can't stand them as a couple, but I like them as a couple. Oh, another thing I want to bring up. Sonny said that um, Dante should press Scott Baldwin or whatever for information and Scott would snitch on Ava or whatever. Here's the thing. And this is what I tried to say before. Scott cannot be charged for whatever they're trying to charge him with, with this whole Avery, I mean, the Ava uh tampering with the pills the most you can do is probably arrest him maybe charge him for tampering with evidence that's the most you can do but here's the thing he did not know about ava switching the pills until after she did it so legally he was not obligated to tell the police about what ava did because that would incriminate his client. Now, had she came to him before she switched the pills, 
and says, Scott, I'm going to switch Morgan's pills. He would be obligated to tell the cops because it was before it happened. But after it happened, that's his client. So anything he says to the cop, anything he said to the cop could incriminate said client. So therefore, he's not legally obligated to that. But he does play a role in, you know, helping her cover it up because he did say he covered her tracks with the pill. So that way, nobody would ever find out she switched them. So he could be guilty of that if they can prove it. But if they can't prove it, they have nothing on him. So Scott. And furthermore, I feel like Ava could even skate on these charges because, number one, all they got are those pills. That's all they got. And like I said before, there's no DNA on them. There's no fingerprints on them. Yes, yeah, she confessed, but they don't have her confession on recording. She could easily say, no, I didn't. It's their word against hers or her word against theirs. She could easily say, I didn't confess anything. Or she could say, I was in emotional distress when I did. Because, mind you, they basically had her trapped in a room. So she was liable to say anything just to get the hell away from them. They pretty much ganged up on her. So she could easily say, I was emotionally distressed. There's a lot of factors in how she could play this to get herself out this mess. Furthermore, yeah, you got Lucy Coe, but any smart lawyer could rip Lucy ass to shreds on a witness stand. First of all, bring in her psychological mental state. Remember, just a few years ago, the bitch was seeing vampires. I would bring that in. And she did time in Shady Brook. So I would definitely bring that to the forefront. She did do time in a psychiatric hospital. So I would mention that in the courtroom, which would discredit her as a viable witness. Two, they could bring up the fact that she extorted Ava with information that she threw some pills away. So that's blackmail charges right there. And if Nell comes into play, I would have a field day with Nell. I bring up the fact that she came into town trying to blackmail and mess up Sonny and Carly's family. And the only reason she's trying to, you know, go after Ava now is because she's trying to get into the Corinthos' good graces again. You could easily play that up. So there's a lot of shit working for Ava in this point. Like any good lawyer could easily argue these points and get her off. I'm just saying. If I would come on, Ava. Hire me as your attorney. That's all you got to do. Hire me as your lawyer. I get you off like that. I just came up with some good ass excuses. I could poke holes in everything. I guarantee to get you a mistrial or a not guilty verdict. Um. So anyway, this was a solid episode. Um. If I'm forgetting something, let me know. I'll see you all tomorrow for the Friday episode. Have a good day. Hit that like button. Hit that comment button. Hit that subscribe button. See you all tomorrow.